Welcome to Excel Campus. This is a video tutorial on Excel tables. Tables were introduced in Excel 2007 and are an incredibly powerful tool that every user should know. They contain some amazing features that will change how you work with your data. With just a few clicks, you can quickly style your data, sort it, filter it, and summarize your table. Tables also bring a new and intuitive way to write formulas and automatically fill them down the sheet for you. They also integrate with some of the most powerful tools in Excel, including charts and pivot tables. Most of all, tables will save you lots of time and increase your productivity. In this video, I will show you how to create a table and then explain 10 awesome features that make them one of the most useful tools in Excel. Once you understand how to use tables, you will wonder how you ever lived without them. So let's get started. This file I will be working with is available for free download at excelcampus.com, so you can follow along. There is a link to the download page below the video. Also, I am using Excel 2013, but you can use Excel 2007 or 2010. Tables are also available for Excel 2011 for Mac. Here I have a set of sales data. To create a table, first you need to select any cell inside the data range. You do not have to select the entire range, just a single cell. Then go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click the Table button, or press Ctrl T on the keyboard. You will be prompted with this window and your data range should automatically be selected. The My Table Has Headers checkbox should also be selected because our table columns have a row of descriptive names at the top. These are the headers. Click OK to create the table. The first thing you will notice about the table is the formatting has been automatically applied. This instantly makes the data look more organized and saves you time from having to manually format each component of the table. When any cell in the table is selected, the Design tab will appear in the ribbon. The Design tab is the control panel for most of the table features, and I will discuss these features throughout the video. In the Table Styles menu, you can instantly apply any of these formatting options to your table or you can create your own. The banded rows and columns can also be turned on or off depending on your preference. I'm going to make this table gray with banded rows and columns and quickly turn off the grid lines so the table stands out on the page a bit more. Each table in the workbook is assigned a unique name. The table name is displayed on the left side of the design tab and can be renamed in this box. We want to give the table a name that describes the data. As a best practice, I always prefix my table names with the letters TBL, then give it a name. In this case, I will name the table Sales. The TBL prefix makes it easy to see all the tables in the workbook when writing formulas, and I will explain more about that later. Probably the second thing you notice about the table is the drop-down arrows in the table header row. These are filters, and they are automatically applied to the table when it is created. This is another feature that saves you time. Filters allow you to quickly sort and filter your data, and contain some great features. Excel recognizes that this column contains dates, and it automatically groups the dates by month and year, so you can filter for a specific time period. Additionally, there's a whole list of date filters to make it easy to filter the data you want to see. The clear filter option makes it easy to clear the filter and see all of your data again. Starting in Excel 2010, the search field was added so you can quickly type what you want to filter for and then see the results below to further filter with the checkboxes. If your table is long, when you scroll down the sheet, the column headers change to the row header names. This only works when a cell inside the table is selected. The filter drop-downs also appear in the column header so you can still sort and filter your data. This means you do not have to use the freeze panes feature to freeze the header row at the top of the sheet. All these features make it extremely fast to organize and manage your data. The table will automatically expand when you add data to it. If I want to add a column to the right of the table, I can simply type a new column name here and press enter. The table automatically expands to the right to include the new column. This works with the rows at the bottom of the table as well. I can start typing data for a new row, 
when I hit the enter or tab key, a new row is automatically added to the table. This also works with copying in new data. Let's say you want to update this table with new data for last month. I'm going to copy some raw data and paste it to the first blank row directly below the table. Again, you can see that the table has been automatically expanded to include the new data. Hovering over the small blue arrow at the bottom right corner of the table will also allow you to expand the table by clicking and holding with the left mouse button and dragging down the sheet. Another convenient feature is the ability to rearrange columns with drag and drop. Select a cell in the column header, then move the mouse cursor to the edge of the cell until you see the crossed arrows. Left click and hold with the mouse, then move the column to the right or left. You will see the long vertical bar indicating where the column will be placed. Release the mouse button to move the column. That's so much faster than cutting and pasting columns. And this also works with rows. Simply select the row by placing the mouse cursor on the left side of the table until it turns into a right arrow. Then left click to select the entire row. Then move the cursor to the edge of the selection to grab the entire row. And drag and drop it where you want the row to be placed. Rows and columns can be inserted in the table or deleted by right clicking on any cell and choosing from the insert and delete options. The keyboard shortcuts Ctrl plus and Ctrl minus also work for this. In the Design tab, you will notice an option named Total Row in the Table Style Options. Click this checkbox to add a summary row to the bottom of your table. A sum of the right column is automatically added to the bottom right cell. When you click on any cell in the Total Row, you will notice a drop-down box to the right of the cell. Clicking this will give you options on what type of metric you want to calculate. Here we can quickly calculate the average quantity sold and the count of transactions. The total row uses the subtotal function to do these calculations, so when you filter the data, the results are updated to reflect the totals of the visible sales only. This is a really handy feature. A common task for any accountant or analyst is to find and remove duplicates from your data set. Excel has a built-in feature for this and it is very easy to use when your data is in a table. Click on any cell in the table and click the Remove Duplicates button on the Design tab. A list of all the column names is displayed. Leave all these checked to search for complete rows of data that match. Then click OK. One duplicate entry has been found and the entire row will be removed from the table. This feature can also be used to create a list of unique values. Let's say we want to create a list of region names from the data in the table. Each region name should only appear once in this list. With any cell selected in the table, click the Remove Duplicates button again. This time, we are only going to select the region column to return a list of the region names. Press OK. You will see that the table now contains one row for each region and you can now copy this to another area of your workbook. That is a lot faster than other methods of using advanced filter, pivot tables, or formulas. Let's look at how tables integrate with pivot tables. On the Design tab, click the Summarize with Pivot Table button. You can also click the Insert Pivot Table button on the Insert tab. When the Create Pivot Table window appears, you'll notice that the table range is already set to the name of the table. Click OK to create the pivot table. I'm going to quickly create a report that shows the quantity sold for each region. The source of the pivot table is the sales table, and the great thing about using a table as a source is that when the data in the table is updated, the pivot table automatically gets updated as well. Let's see how this works. I'm going to add some new data for last month to my table by copying and pasting it directly below the table. The table is automatically resized to include the new data. Now when I go back to the pivot table, I can simply click the refresh button on the analyze tab and the new data is included in my results. This integration between tables and pivot tables will not only save you time, it will also prevent you from creating reports that are missing data. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's forgotten to update the range of source data and made the embarrassing mistake of leaving data out of a report. This connection between tables and pivot tables eliminates that.
I want to quickly show one new feature in Excel 2013 with pivot tables. Again, I'm going to click on a cell in the table and go to the Insert tab, then choose Recommended Pivot Tables. A window appears with various options for reports you might want to create from your data. This is a really great feature because it not only saves you time, but it's also a great way for beginners to learn how to work with pivot tables. Find the report you like and click OK to create the pivot table. Charts also have a similar relationship to tables. When new data is added to a table, the chart is automatically updated and reflects the new data. Here I have inserted a line chart that displays the quantity sold over time. When I add new data to the bottom of the table, the chart is automatically updated to reflect the new data. I want to show another great feature in Excel 2013 for charts. With the cell selected in the table, go to the Insert menu and click the Recommended Charts button. This will show some sample charts that might be useful to you. You can scroll through them and see different slices of your data. This is an analyst dream right here. With a few clicks, I can see how my reps are performing and what regions might need attention. There are also new options for filtering and displaying your data once you create the chart. It's a really great addition to Excel 2013 that I think you will love. Finally, we are going to look at table formulas. These are also known as structured references and bring a new way to write formulas in Excel. Instead of using cell addresses, we can now use the table column names in our formulas. Here I am going to add a new column for revenue by simply typing the header name. Then in the first row, I am going to create a formula to multiply the quantity by the unit price. When I select the cell that contains the quantity, you see that the column name is placed in the formula instead of the cell address. The at symbol tells us that we are referring to the same row that the formula is in, and the brackets tell Excel that we are referring to a table column. Now I will enter the multiplication symbol and click the unit price cell. This may look foreign to you at first, but once you get used to it, you will definitely see the benefits. Now watch when I click the enter key to enter this formula. The formula will automatically be copied down the entire column. How's that for a time saver? This new formula syntax can also be used outside the table. I'm going to type a simple sum formula to return the sum of the revenue column. I will enter the sum function and after the parentheses I enter the table name. You can see that as I start to type the table name, the results are narrowed down. When I enter TBL, I get a list of all the tables in the workbook because I name them all with the TBL as a prefix. This is where this comes in so handy. And notice that some of these tables are not on this sheet. You do not need to include the sheet name when writing these formulas. So I'm going to choose the sales table and you can autofill this with the arrows and tab key. Then I type an open bracket to go to the list of my column names. I can type it in or simply down arrow to the revenue column and then press the tab key. Now I enclose the column reference with a bracket and close the sum function with the parentheses. Hit enter and I get my total. There are many great benefits to writing formulas this way. The formulas are easy to write because we are using words that describe our data instead of the column letters and row numbers that the data is stored in. This is especially important if the formula is on a different sheet from the table. Here is the same formula on a different sheet. Without having to look at the sheet that contains the table, I know that my formula is returning the sum of the revenue on the sales table. This is the same formula using cell references. I can see that the data is located on the sales worksheet, but I have no idea what is stored in this range. I would have to navigate to that sheet and research that. Let's look at another example using a VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to insert a column in our table for the rep name by using the right-click menu and choosing Insert Column to the left. We are going to look up the rep's name from this table located on the Rep Table tab of the workbook. The rep number is in the first column and we want to return the rep's name from the second column. Going back to the sales table, I will start writing the VLOOKUP formula. The first argument is the lookup value, which is the rep ID, so I click that cell. You can see that the column name is returned in brackets. Now I need to enter the table array and we can simply use the table name for this. So I will type TBL to see a list of my tables, then choose the rep table. 
Third argument is the column number. I know my rep name is in column two of the rep table. And the last argument will be false for an exact match. When I click enter, the entire column is filled with rep names. To me, that is an extremely efficient way to write a formula. We can simply type the formula with descriptive words instead of having to worry about column letters and row numbers that are constantly changing. For example, if you were to add an additional rep to your rep table, the formula would automatically capture that and update the results. There is no need to change the VLOOKUP formula with the new rows. Everything is dynamically updated with tables. I hope this video has helped you see the benefits of using tables. Tables are an extremely useful and powerful tool, and they are the way of the future for Excel. You will find links to additional resources and videos at the link below this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this, and check out the blog at excelcampus.com. You'll find lots of articles to learn more about Excel, and some useful tools and add-ins to make your spreadsheet life easier. Thanks for watching, and leave a comment with any questions.